Well done, everybody. You're welcome to the Daily Digest with uh, Jimmy Disu. And today is Friday. Friday is the day that I promised you that we'll be speaking to our own dear Auntie Aduni, um, who is well known for, for want of a better word, I just well known for her beef with some Nigerian pastors. And let me quickly make a quick declaration. I, I'm, I'm a dog in the fight. Um, because we want a better society, essentially. Uh, I'm not anti-Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm proud to be one. Um, I have nothing against other religions, but we want the proper things done. Uh, and so that's the discussion I'm going to have with that. Good morning, Auntie Aduni. How are you? I'm very fine. Good morning, Mr. Jisoo. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry we started a bit late. She's, she's in the United States. I had to wake her up at 4 o'clock American time this morning for her to get up. So we thank you so much for finding time to get up long before your get up time. But everyone will be whatever Jess Arini, you know. And oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, 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 we don't have much time. Let me just run straight into business. Now, right, now, now it, it looks as if um, you're a Christian, right? Yes. Why were, were you born a Christian? No. Okay. But, I, was born a, I was born into a Muslim family. You, you were born into a Muslim family, just like me. You know, I was also born into a Muslim family and also a Christian. So I had to join our neighbor. But... <laughs> But but you, you had an experience, because I had the experience, but I'd like you to tell Nigerians, especially those who are not on the social media. What mm. was your experience that made you start a campaign against those you consider bad pastors? It is important mm. for, for people to know that those she considers uh, bad bad pastors, that you were a member of the redeemed, is that right? And then, yes. Uh, and then when your husband died, some incident... I was not only a member, I was a worker. Yes. And a pastor's wife. Okay, so what happened? What what went wrong? Um I'm not as if any um when something happened, that was my husband's um demise. Yes. Uh, before it is it is demise, we were a worker in Redeem and yes. um private worker. Yes. But I may not be able to go into all the details of yes. To join the workforce and how I, I began to see a lot of things when I became a worker that were wrong okay. in the church. Mm -hmm. And one of it is that we have hungry people in the church and we were not allowed to touch the offering and tithe to use to help these people. So that is that was when I started questioning some things. Okay. But of course in this you are told not to question authority. I see you know, nobody is interested in in your opinion on anything? No, no, no. You can't question authority. Okay. Then, I don't now. And uh, all the money you collect, all the offering and tithes, you take back to the, to you send it back to the headquarters. Mm. And I began to question why we have to still be the one to raise money on our own to fund the church. Mm. You pay the rent of the church from your pockets. You pay maintenance from your own pockets. You do almost everything from your own pocket. That is the branches. And, uh, yes, all the branches. the branches. Yes. Yeah, all the branches. And at the end of the month, you collate everything you collect. I mean, every week, you have to send everything you make. I mean, make. I will call it make because mm. at, at that time, it was looking like a business to me. Mm. You take everything you make and you have to send everything back to the headquarters. Mm -hmm. So I began to question and, you know, we had some people who don't have work among us that are workers and they find it difficult to actually contribute. Nobody was interested in their welfare. No one was interested in them getting a job. All they were asking is they have to contribute. And they make you make it seem like if you don't, you are sinning against God. So I began mm -hmm. to question all, the, all these things. So and we went on and the burden was so much on us. Yes, you and your then, husband. Yes, as a pastor then. Mm. As a pastor, he was the pastor. I was okay. the pastor's wife. Okay, uh, yeah, I, yes. I've watched... <laughs> you can say that again. <laughs> and I watched the man every January giving all his salary for January as first through to the church. I and see. We have to... What did you say, sir? I said, I see. Oh, yes. And uh, nobody cares about how okay. you feed. You, you just have to. Okay, when, when, so many, 
when he, when he gave his first seeds to the church for that month of January, which which is also going to pay school fees. How did you manage? Ha, huh. we have to wait till seven February, or maybe he must have saved some money by December. Hmm. Yes. Or we wait till February before we pay. Was it his own salary he gave as first fruit, or his own and your own? His own, no. Uh, I'm that, 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 <laughs> that, I was actually a full-time housewife as I then. Yes. I was a full-time housewife. I wasn't really working. Mm. You know, I was just doing something small in the house because I'm the very active type. You can't keep your place. Yes. So I was just no small business inside the house there. So, so he, 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 he had a full-time job, and he was also he doing pastoral work. Yes. Go on. He has a full-time job. Yes. He was, um, he was uh, as at that time, let me say, he was the managing director of his own company. Yes. Then that he just started, you know. And um, he was even start trying to stand on his feet as at that time. Mm. Proud before the time, he was working as a general manager in one of the big insurance companies in Nigeria. Mm. So you can imagine how much his salary will be in January. Yes. Ah, yeah, and he has to cut his salary at the end of the month <laughs> and take it to the church. Aside that, he still has to pay his offering and tithes. On top of the first, first fruit? The first fruit is gone. On top of the first fruit, he still has to look for his offering and tithe to still pay. Okay, so let's let's jump start because time is not our friend in you know here. Let's jump start right. to when he now finally passed because I remember yeah, you when saying he passed, when he passed. Yes. Yeah, was where I began to really question a lot of things because when he passed away, yeah, the church helped in the burial and everything. Uh, his church, the church, and his friends. He has, of course, he has big friends in big companies. There, you know, they came together and they did the burial and everything. And um, I was given some money by the church and friends. And few more, few weeks after I was given the money, mm. the church came back to me and said he borrowed, he has um, a loan to pay to Agai Bank, uh, owned by the church. Yes, Agai Bank is the bank of Redeemed Christian Church of I God. I know. Yes. So they said he has a loan to pay, and lo and behold, that was half of amount of what they gave me. Hmm. So I had to turn half of that money back to them. Wow. As I then, I was questioning because as I then, I couldn't process things very well. Mm. Then after that, um, I was ready to go back to church. And I was told the church was actually rented by my husband. Then it was one and some one or two other people paying the rent. And I was like, okay, this is where I belong to. Let me go back to church. I got there. And I was called into a meeting that I can't continue going into that church anymore. Why? Um, they said um, leadership has changed hands and they don't want clash of conflicts with the new leadership. I see. So I look for any other branch to start going parish. Hmm. So I, and uh, when they told me that, you know, that was a big blow on me. Mm. And I went back home and... Since then, I started questioning a thing, a lot of other things. That what is church meant for? Mm. Is it is it supposed to be a family thing, as in where something happens to you, you see comfort, and you see people to support you and everything out of your pains. But at that point, I was virtually left alone to cope on my own. Did you make and, nobody? Are you saying that the church didn't make any efforts to set? I wonder, for example, why. They hadn't deducted that money before they then gave it to you. Uh, okay, so when, I, they, when they asked for it back, madam, did they ask for the full amount? Or they said you could pay it over time? No, no, no. They asked for the full amount that it was owing. They said if, they, if I have to pay instrumentally, they are going mm -hmm. to put interest on it. I see. I see. Yeah. I see. O okay, yes. so what then made you leave the church eventually? Um, After what they said... I couldn't go to a new parish to go and start, start sitting down. I don't know anybody there. Mm. I was still trying to cope with my pains of losing my husband at a very tender age. Yes. I was still coming to, trying to come to the terms of being left with three children, young children. Hmm. The first one was two, the, the second one was four, and the last one was two as a day. 
So I was still trying to cope with the pains of coming to terms with what has gone wrong with me, what has happened to me. Mm -hmm. So when they asked me to leave, I needed a place whereby I will see people to talk to, I will see people to hold my hands. Oh, are you saying so, that they didn't rally around you and offer any after support? The, after the barrier, yes. I think they visited once after that and I stopped seeing them for almost two or three years. But but I remember in one of your stories you claimed that um, you got some you got you you made an ad, you got some money back from them uh, in one of your oh. episodes. <laughs> yes. What money was yeah. that? <laughs> What's the other part? Yeah, after I left, you know, after I left, uh, when they said that I should start <laughs> going to another parish, yes. I actually went to another parish for like two times. Yes. I was in another parish two times, and when I got to that parish. I, I felt like a stranger because I don't know anybody there aside the pastor. So, so you, you pastor, were banned from the, the previous parish? Yes. Completely banned? Yes. I see. I see. Yes. So that was when I started questioning them. Because okay. then I didn't have the boldness. <laughs> Kofi, can you translate that? No, don't bother. Don't bother. Don't bother. Don't bother. <laughs> I can't. I was right. So, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, this what we have, to, what we, what I've had to do is to summarize the various episodes where she told her story. You can, she's um, on, she's on, you're on YouTube, baby. I'm on YouTube. She's on YouTube, uh, Auntie. Um, uh, and I have the story there. I titled it "My Experience as a Worker in Redeem," Part One to Five. Mm. I, 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 I read that, but but later on now, now you you tend to, to um. I don't want to use the word precon, but you criticize a lot of pastors that you think are not doing right. What are the things yeah. what are the things that you think are not being done right? Can you give us one or two examples? Yes, I I I have started on this crusade and honestly I am not stopping till yes. my last break. Wow. Um one of the things I see and which we cannot deny is the fact that most of these churches, especially the woman owned churches, yes. are nothing but business enterprise. Hmm. Because what you see is uh, if they want to follow what the Bible says, it says bring you the tithes and the offering into the storehouse, right? Yes. So that there will be in the house. Yes. I always ask, cite this example. In a house, you have the father, the mother, the children, the house, the house help, the drivers and everybody. They are supposed mm -hmm. to eat out of this, right? Yes. But what in churches is that after giving offering and tithes, the pastor or whoever is in charge will pocket everything and that is the end. Oh, is that and what happens in most churches now? That is what is going on because if I look at where I came from, where I got to this point, um, what I see is you bring the, the offering and the tithes and when you need help, you are nowhere, they are nowhere to be found. Hmm. It is what I experienced. Even the school they established, I tried to take my children there, thinking that could help. I went there. The school fees, I couldn't even pay. Wow. The school fees was expensive, yes. As a member, they know me as a member. And I was like, so I can't even afford the school fees of a church I'm going to, hmm. that I'm a bona fide member for years. I was not even ordinary a member. I was a dickiness. Really? So I was like, Going on, so those are the things I saw, and not only that. If you look at what we have, everybody is just springing up to be a pastor these days. Yes, every nook and corner, um, corner of Nigeria. So, is so, so we, we actually we can call you Dickiness Aduni. Ah, no, I don't <laughs> want that. Dickiness. You know what they get? Because there are, are people who only think of themselves and not others. So I don't want to be part of that. Okay, I have adopted humanity as my religion. Humanity first in everything. Oh, okay, so you don't go to church at all now? No, I don't. I stopped going years oh, ago. Oh, okay, about... okay. Would, would you no. consider yourself a Christian? Now, I won't consider myself a Christian anymore. Uh, may I ask why? Are, are you back to being a Muslim? Um, no, I am not. I, uh -oh. I don't want to be affiliated with religion as it is. Okay, fair enough. I mean, fair that's That's... Irrespective of their religion, that's why I don't want to affiliate with religion because mm -hmm. I find out that 
more like religion is now a fraternity thing. Oh, you are a Christian. I must love you. You are not a Christian, so I don't want to have anything to do with you. So I don't want anything of that. Mm, okay, that's fair enough. I just wanted to, I, I wanted to go through that uh, so that um, people don't think that, okay, maybe you've gone back to be a Muslim and now you're highly critical of, of uh, the no. church they're coming from. Okay, wow. 9.22 Lagos time. We are going to take a break uh, in about two minutes. But we'll open up our lines when we come back, 0700-993-993-993. And then uh, the female line, 0201-465-7190. I have one minute, so I can take just one caller now, quickly, Kofi. One caller, that caller there, yes. Hello, good morning. Morning. Good morning, sir. Quickly, quickly, just go straight to your question, please. Uh, I want to thank you for bringing this lady. I saw her social media platform and uh, I I was, I felt for my own. But where I'm going is that as you have been able to bring her, please help bring the people from the Redeemed Church too. Thank you. Okay. Well, it's, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't want to make this thing a, that, that kind of um, argument. It's a story that I'm in, in, in interested in. Um, I don't want to be, be in between two people. Like, I just want to ask yes. Morning. Hello, good morning. Yes. Morning. Uh, let me thank you too for bringing her. I'm a Baptist. I've been saying this for a very long time. Yes. Churches that have you, I'm very sorry, I might not be able to have And this is a true story. You can see that this is what priest who was talking. Yes. This is now coming through another person again. And people are going after priest then. Yes. And I see now. And that's why I said, I told myself, so I'm, I'm born a Baptist. And that's what I'm going to say. Thank you for being here. Oh, okay, we'll, we'll take a short break now and then we'll be right back. To us, news talk. <laughs> if you want to talk to us, listen to us talk. Despite security challenges, the education sector I'm plans... not planning to truncate Nigeria's democracy. Well, I can tell you right now that Anthony Joshua is preparing... Nigeria's electricity fuel subsidies make up 7 trillion in our IMF. Oh, wow. Listen to others talk. For the past eight years, they kept on telling on the same story. They have started again. I don't even advise the whole country. No, 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 no. The problem we have with our leaders is that they are not telling us the truth. Tune in to 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. The news. The news. Timely. Fresh. Madam, you don't try this new. Wash hair for you want no lie, relax, suck it. We get free neutralizing shampoo and conditioner join. What? Me, I know deal. Uh, you're not even sabi waiting the apple for town. You see this lush hair relaxer so. You know the pepe. You know the bond. It won't even make your hair shine like oil. That's so. Lush hair relax, suck it. Not correct. We're not going to make your hair cut. Uh-huh. We're not going to make your hair dry. Uh-huh. You know the pepe. Uh-huh. And they relax hair well, well. <laughs> Be beautiful. Attention drivers in Lagos. Are you ready for rewards? InDrive is giving out 10,000 air fuel vouchers to 1,200 new drivers. Download the InDrive app, sign up to drive, and take 25 rides in the following two weeks before May 25th. The start date is counted as the moment driver registers and there is only one price per person. The InDrive online passenger transportation aggregator is not a taxi service. Find more information at www.indrive.com. Attention Lagos! Get ready for the ultimate celebration at the Family Fun Fiesta edition of the Run for the Future Marathon. On the 27th of April, 2024, join us at the Moriokuola Park in Victoria Island for a day packed with excitement, fitness, and family fun. Whether you're a seasoned runner or just want to join in the fun, this event is for everyone. Plus, it's ARM's 30th anniversary. So what are you waiting for? Register now at rftf.arm.com.ng. That's rftf.arm.com.ng. ARM, invested in your tomorrow. Did you know that fostering gender equality in Nigeria could boost the GDP by $129 billion by 2025? 
Join host Abosede George Ogan as we discuss the topic equity in governance. Featuring esteemed guest Nafisa Atikwa Dejumo, Program Officer Shehu Musa Yaradua Foundation, Honorable Sheye Adisa, former member of the Oyo State House of Assembly from 2019 to 2023, and Kole Lawao, Executive Director of Electoral College Nigeria. Together, let's shape a society where opportunities are abundant and benefits are equitably distributed. Tune in on Sunday, 6.30 p.m. on Channels Television, DSTV Channel 420, on GoTV Channel 48, or on YouTube at Will & Global. The Leading Woman Show is supported by the National Endowment for Democracy and Luminate. So why do you have so many teas and sachets of cowbell? Oh, it's what I plan to share this Ramadan. <laughs> My sister, you can start by sharing some with me now. Oh yeah, take. It's Ramadan after all. In this holy month, share the nourishing goodness of cowbell with friends and family. It contains vitamin B9, Vitarich, and it's so creamy, so good. Ramadan Kareem. Cowbell of creamy goodness. He done of trading himself. James, I hello. Susan, I beg. <laughs> Say the wine mini. For where? You who no longer depend solely on your salary. So you people trade and don't carry us along in this office, Abby. Jerry, now you they talk like this. Who doesn't want an extra stream of income? But I'm still looking for better trading conditions, I beg. Fast execution of my trades and possibly an account where swap. No go carry all my profits where I don't know. Guy, hfm.com. For me, I wouldn't mind better spreads at all. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to be able to make withdrawals in a flash. All we want is transparency and great customer service. Guys, I said hfm.com. Which one is hfm.com again? Switch to hfm today to enjoy ultra fast execution. One to two thousand leverage, tight spreads, swap free and more. Guys, show us the way now. Wait, oh, are you sure? Deposits and withdrawals are sharp, sharp. I said hfm.com. Visit www.hfm.com. HFM, online trading at its finest. Here is an amazing opportunity for your child to win 1 million Naira, laptop, one-year free data, cool hoodie, and other exciting prizes in the System Specs 2024 Children's Day Essay Competition. The competition is open to children aged 9 to 16, and the essay topic is protecting the Nigerian child from the dangers of online technology. Hurry now to bit.ly forward slash 2024 essay for more information. Entry closes on April 19, 2024. 99.3 Nigeria Info, your number one station for talk. Let's talk. You're listening to Jimmy Diso, Jimmy Diso. right here on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Nigeria Info. Okay, you welcome back uh, to Daily Digest with Jimmy Dissou. And I have uh, Auntie Adoni, um, who is, she, she, she likes to describe herself as an influencer. She has programs on YouTube and uh, Facebook. Uh, and, and recently, she's, uh, she says she has this mission to point out all the fraudulent acts that are taking place in the kingdom. In, in the process of, uh, Auntie Adoni, are you hearing me? Yes, I can hear you. Loud and clear, good. Uh, in this, yeah. in, I've seen over time that you've been able to point out quite a number of things that don't just appear right. You know, for the purpose of, you know, you know, we have a lot of local listeners here who are not on YouTube and are not on Facebook and have never seen. So could you point out one or two examples that you've had of what you would call bad behavior of, of um, you know, uh -huh. some of these persons? Yes. Yes, number one, mm. uh, the members, mm. the need ones in the church mm. are overlooked. That's actually my priority. Mm. They yeah. are overlooked. Then uh, the way the school, the members cannot, most members cannot afford the schools that the church establishes. Yes. And uh, the way how one person becomes so rich without working. From being a pastor, mm. it's alarming, you know. And because I feel this is why a lot of people want to become pastor now. And we are seeing all sorts of activities 
that are appalling and disheartening. Yes. I mean, use that word. Um, for example, uh, there was this pastor in Kenya. I will mention Kenya now because that's the recent issue I discussed yesterday on my page. Yes. Where the pastor um, took six teeth of people out of their mouths. Six. You know? Yes. Six of their lower teeth were removed. Every if member. They have to such yes hmm. indoctrination is another thing i don't want to mention names now um for example a lot of youths were deprived of your youthful years where they would tell you don't watch tv don't yes. do this don't do that and today you are being told that that same tv you can watch it what they told us as a youth <laughs> don't, don't do that you now see their own children doing it then you wonder what's going on. Mm. So, yes, that does it mean, was it God that told them or their mind was telling them and they were telling us and making us to abide and live by such rules, thereby we lost our youth. Mm. And suddenly we woke, wake up now, their own children are living their best of life. Another thing I'm very, very against, which most of these leaders do not know is the way they preach to people. People see them as second to God. In fact, some people take them to be God. Yes. That whatever they say is the truth, whatever they say is what they do. These preachers are do what I say, not do what I do, because we don't live with them in their houses. Yeah. Most of the pastors go around with security guards, best of doctors. Among the entourage, they have doctors. Among the mm. entourage, they have if anything happened, they can quickly have first aid on them. And these are the same people that will stand on their pulpits and be telling people, uh, faith is this, by stripes you are healed, they did this and that. And their followers will take this word to heart. Correct me, when they are sick. Correct me if I'm wrong. That was one of the complaints you had that your husband couldn't take medication. He didn't take medication. Yes. And that led yes. to his After death. That, yes. He has a master's. He was a member of Institute of Directors. To let you know how highly placed the was, and there. he wasn't taking medication because he said he was told in the church. Not he to stopped do. taking medication, and I didn't even know he was not feeling okay. It was the autopsy that made us know that he was not feeling okay. That it was really, if I tell you what really took this guy away, it was something mm -hmm. that antibiotic would have sorted out. Wow. Yes, it was something antibiotic would have sorted out because. He was just like, he's okay. He's okay. I said, well, you don't look okay. Do you want to go to the hospital? He said, no. Mm. At the point, he was complaining of headache. So I thought it was um, work-related stress, you know. And the day he was to go, he said he was not going to work on that day. And that was when I really knew he was not feeling okay. And I was like, can we go to the hospital? He said he wants to see by tomorrow morning if he doesn't feel better. Yeah. And I remember that was the time the general overseer was preaching about faith, faith to his pastors, that if you want to be a pastor, you want to heal the sick, you want to do the miracles I'm kind of doing, you need to exercise faith on yourself too. Hmm. You know? And we were just young people. We were in our 30s, for crying out loud. Hmm. Today, I would say, stupidity got us there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. No, if I knew better, I'm sure if you knew better then, a lot of such issues issues are happening in that country a lot of people are going on a daily basis listening to these people that say eh, by faith by stripes you are healed by stripes you are this and because of the situation of the country if somebody that has enough money can believe that eh, we were using one of the best dog and one of the best hospitals in the then and you know i remember i had my child at mother and child hospital on general you know and this man was like, it's okay, it's okay, until he went. By the time they did the autopsy, and I saw the autopsy, I was shocked. Mm. Oh, okay. Know, uh, uh, so uh, oh, oh, okay, sorry, because uh, uh, time, you know, time. So also, yes, also you've had to point out what we would call outright fraudulent practices of some of these practitioners. Would you like yes. to mention one or two, without mentioning them, though, like one or two instances? Okay, for example, somebody will come and tell you, uh, they come to the altar when they are preaching, and they say, they will tell you God said, 
he needs 10 people who can give 1 billion naira for the kingdom. And if they call, maybe when they called it one, um, 10 people, they couldn't raise enough 10 people. God told you 10 people, right? Yes. If 10 people don't come out, you see another, the next thing they will tell you, God says he wants to bless some people specially. Now he wants to extend it to people who cannot afford 10 be 1 billion, but yes. can give 500 million. million yes. Then, okay, why did God say 1 billion before? Then why <laughs> must God need money? Why does he have a special amount he needs from people? Okay, what about people that cannot give? Are they not going to be partaker of that same blessing? Yeah. So that means blessing is to be bought. And do you know what? Mm. All these pastors, if you don't have money, you cannot go close to them. Really? You cannot. Oh, yes. Mm. Except that members want to lie. You cannot. You must have attained some certain height, certain class. Before you can uh -huh. have access. Yes. For example, there is a particular church. I won't mention name. They know themselves. Yeah. If they have um, what they call platinum partner, gold really? partner, diamond partner, yes, silver partner. The access the silver has is not the same access the gold has. Huh. The access the gold has is not the same access the go um, the platinum um, the diamond has. The access of the um, diamond is not the same as the platinum. To so, the pastor. Uh, yes, I mean there was one there's one that was always um telling people to sow seed. Later he resigned. He said he's no longer a pastor, he's the biggest developer now. And, and oh, I wonder oh, whether there's a correlation. <laughs> he collected dollars. Yes, today, so. today, today, <laughs> he said he has retired. Uncle, <laughs> Uncle, this that man that was a video that man was telling people to pay. One thousand dollar each for each year they have spent in life. In life, yes. Yes. So and I was like, at that time, I think I was fifty three or so. I said, so I will have paid fifty three thousand dollars. Yes. Where yes. will I get that kind of money from? So if I don't pay, it's God will buy me or what? No, God will I'm not sure buy you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. let's we, we'll take one or two one or two calls. Uh, I, I wish we had time, you know, and I'd love to spend more time with you. But we need to actually take uh, what's happening. Is, is the other line bad? Okay, I think the 0700 is bad. What happened? The two lines are down. Okay, two lines, which is good. So we have more time. We have more time to assess. When it comes up, you let me know. Yes, so do you believe in miracles? You know, some of them say they do miracles. There is one that carries walking down. That carries um, kilos in Walking around crutches. Uh, uh, crutches. And uh, do you, do you? I, I'm sure you have disdain for those things. The, the yes, I do because the miracle they claim is not the miracle we are talking of. I believe if you want to perform miracle, we have hospitals there. We have a gobi. Let them go to that place and help us to perform miracles. There are lots of people in hospitals who don't have money to pay for hospital bill. All right, all right, they are there. Let yes. them go there and perform the miracle. You stay in your church, you say you are performing a miracle. And for example, there was a past, there was one of the, the same called Crutch's man said he just healed somebody of kidney. Hmm. And he mentioned the hospital where they went to do the checkup only for the hospital to say there was nothing like that in that their hospital. Oh my god. Oh yes. This is just this week. Oh, okay, Auntie Adoni, do you think that it is revelation time? Because if you are in the social media, there's a lot of, loads of revelations coming out. Loads, not just in Nigeria, across the whole world. Do you yes, think it's... it's you, you think so? Oh, yes, because they have such people in America here too. So it's like, it's a world thing now. Mm. It's a world thing. Not only about... So when people come to me and say, Auntie Adjuni, you are the one we want to put... I say, I'm not pulling no Christianity down. Nobody can put Christianity no, down. we have to cleanse it. <laughs> among okay. them i'm of the view until i do need that christianity cannot go on the way it is and no, it, it no in fact to be honest with you even islam to the same thing even the the same thing we, we seem to have this habit of drawing things down to you, you know uh, um and, and it's very very sad let me ask you a question i, I thank god i remember this question i'm going to ask you do you think okay. that is there anything called mass hypnosis do you, because sometimes you find people arguing with you over things that are so obvious. 
logical and reasonable, right? Yes. Do, do you do you believe in mass hypnosis? Yes, I do. Not only ordinary one, even diabolical. So I believe on show I, Let us call it the spirit, the spirit. They go to, I want to believe they go to that extent because <laughs> the thing they make some people do, you Honestly. will wonder. Then brainwash, like I always tell people, brainwash is a huge one. It's not a small thing that should be overlooked. Hmm. And it is not something you should overlook. Brainwash is very, very strong. And staying under somebody, listening to them over and over again can make you hypnotized and make you begin to do whatever they tell you to do. Remember, people see these people as second to God, yes. if not God themselves. So whatever comes out of their mouth, and these people have a way of talking, of sweet talking to you, and mm. if people can hold debts, if people can be pledging the money they don't have, and go borrow to give to a pastor, that should tell you how powerful hypnotism is. Hmm. So I believe so much in, in, in hypnotism. Hmm. Oh, okay. Now, what what you've set this out, you've set out this mission, and um, I'm asking myself, would it have an end, or is something you want to do for life? Is it just a one-off project, or is something you want to do for life? That's number one. Number two is, I've also seen that it's now veered into societal norms, things that are abnormal. You know, you try to, which is noble and nice. Uh, we are we're on the same page in that. But I just want to know if you think that, okay, I want to do this for two, three years, and after that, I'm done. Um, I can't say that I'm stopping at a certain time, but mm. what I tried to do, when I started, I didn't even set out to do this. Okay. That is one do. So at a point, I think it is even God. It's a ministry God is giving me myself. Mm. Because I didn't set out to do this at all. I just found myself doing this i have from the from the feedback i get from people yes. i know making positive impacts mm. i get a lot of feedback people are not because of stigmatization and ostracization mm. ostracizing people our people don't have the boldness to actually come out and, and talk yes parents and feel but they are able to come in box and relate with me and tell me auntie thank you for doing this mm. uh please don't stop there was a woman that told me her husband, because her husband believed in a certain geo. Here in America, the man lives in America. The geo usually come to Nigeria, America to do programs once a year. Mm. And this man, as learned as he was, believed so much in the geo. He became sick. He had eye problem. And he was putting anointing oil. You can ah. imagine it is where you have a doctors. Yeah. Today, he has gone completely blind. Hey, you look like wow. Yeah. That's so when I hear people coming back to tell me this is what thank you for doing this, this is my own experience too. I am not the only one that have experienced a husband not using medication. Some it is their wives, yes. some their children. A man, it was his own daughter last week that called me. No, this week that was telling me mm. here in America is his, his daughter of some, something years old. Some have even broken homes. Oh there, there's a lot of that. Some have broken homes. <laughs> Hope of that broken home for here in America, if they know that the wife is a nurse or has a very good job than the yes. husband, yes, they try to draw the wife close to them. Of course, we women are more close, we, we are we are the one inside this thing deeper than men. See. So, if they see you are the one bringing in the correct money and your husband wants to be like, they will start making you see your husband as the one that will drag you back from the kingdom. You know, they wow. have this. Um, in the Bible that says, if your right hand is going to make you it's not to enter the kingdom, you understand? Yes. So they are ready to cut off their spouses. At the end of are the day, you kidding? they will become a single mother. Hmm. Okay, I also, I also, I was also wondering, uh, um, do you go to work? Is this a full-time ministry? Is this a full-time job? Or, or, no, no, or no, no, just... no. I, I, Oh, I have my job, full time okay. job. I only okay. do this by the side. Yes, oh, okay. I only do this by I have the time. Or when I see any video, I put out a video a few days ago where a pastor was telling people that uh, if they give, that is when they will increase. 
that if people are giving to them, they can never increase. And I say that is a lie. Hmm. If people give to you, you increase more. That is why these pastors are increasing. That is why they are becoming very rich because they keep receiving, they keep receiving, and they are smarter than their members. As they receive, they invest. Hmm. They don't receive and spend. They receive and invest. That is why that man, that estate man, can be boasting of large estate in expensive place now. As they are collecting, they are, they are investing. They are collecting, they are investing. They are not wasting it like us. And remember, they keep collecting every Sunday. So I told people, I said, don't mind him, oh. If people give you money, collect and use it wisely and smartly. Then you will increase. It's when you are giving. But if you keep giving, you will become a church rat yourself. <laughs> that is why the only person that becomes rich yes. is the somebody, a church that is receiving. Who are the leaders? And that is why you see the members, they keep praying, I receive every day. And they are not receiving nothing. The only person receiving is the pastor and getting richer and richer and richer. Today, their children are taking over of that, getting over their business. Yes, yes, yes. Living food. It's amazing today that children are abroad. The schools are set up with, from these offerings. The members can't attend. And yet, people are not asking questions. Well, it's, it's like I told you, I'm a dog in this fight. Uh, but you're still a Christian, technically, aren't you? You said? You're still a Christian, or are you a free thinker? I'm a free thinker now. I'm a free I'm, I'm still a Christian. I, I, I don't think I'll, I'll stop being that um, in my own <laughs> way. <laughs> I'm a <laughs> okay. We have, uh, it's unfortunate it's that... It's about when schooling abroad. Yes. I have told people how they raise money when they need to pay school fees for their children abroad. Can I mean, quickly, quickly tell, yes, go on. If they have a bill to pay, maybe their children need to go to school abroad and they need to pay like $50,000. Yes. It doesn't, um, it's not a big deal to them and they don't have to touch their money. Hmm. All they need to do is to have a special program. Okay. They have a special program. Oh, yes. All they have is all they need to raise money and they invite a special guest. By the time they inspire, invite the special guest, you know they are going to print flyers. They go and meet some big, big guns and tell them they need to do programs. Those ones can donate. Maybe, for example, let them give flyers to about 10 people. They can give them 1-1 one, one million or 2-2 two, two million each. Hmm. Two, two people, 10 people giving you 2 million, that's 20 million, right? Hmm. Then they have the special guest who will come and say, God says he needs 10 people or 100 people to give another 1 million each. Maybe out of that, maybe only 20 people will give. That's another 20 million, right? Hmm. And they break it down. And they start raising. By the end of the program, they can be raising about 100 million. Hmm. And invited guest will be giving his own portion, his own part, while he's going back. Hmm. It's not for free. All, all expenses when paid. That home is not free. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Anthony. Uh, this is where we end the program today. I'm so sorry. We alliance collapsed. Uh, um, they've been troublesome all over the week anyway, even as at yesterday Alliance collapsed. And yeah, I'd like to thank you very much. I'm so sorry I had to get you up by 4 o'clock in the morning. But shame me, Oshachet, we can call you another time, can't we? Oh, sure, definitely. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm glad. And yeah, Adunia, like I said, has programs on the social media. And it's highly critical of bad pastors. I mean, it's, it's, she's thank not... you for using that word, bad pastor. Yes. Because they think out for all pastors. It's not all pastors. No, no, no. It's not all pastors. Uh, same for me. I mean, I, like I said, I'm in the same... Uh, uh, I'm a dog in the fight. I, I, I don't like bad pastors. I don't like people taking advantage of other people. And I, and, I, and, I, and I have no apologies. Because if I run my programs trying to stop people to take politicians taking advantage of, 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 mm -hmm. of, of, of people, why should pastors be any different? The people that mm -hmm. you run to for soccer. Okay, I just don't need... Yes. Can I quickly change this? I think yes. our government needs to look into the way we have churches all over the place. I think there is a need for them to do that. Yes, okay. Uh, it will be noted, but I'm sure very little will be done because they are all hand in glove. I believe those yeah. are... The, the, I believe in the conspiracy of the politicians, the civil servants, the religious leaders, and the elites to hold down this country. I believe so much, but they are all yes. like intertwined. Okay, I'm tired of yeah. go back to bed. Go back to bed. <laughs> go back to bed. It's, it's, been, it's been nice talking to you. That's where I'm going to close the curtains uh, for today. I'll be back tomorrow morning at nine o'clock 
which would be a, a bit of an extension of uh, uh, Baris, what's his name now? Baris Lumide's program. We'll, we'll be talking about um, some family issues. We will extend it into my program. And I'm in agreement with him on that. One more time, I'd like to thank uh, Auntie Aduni for, for giving us time. Oof, she now has to go back to bed at 5 o'clock, wake up at 7 and uh, run off to work. Did you have a good time, my dear? Yes, I did. You did? Okay, mm -hmm. all right. So I'll see you all tomorrow at 9. Bye. Ninety nine point three Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info ninety nine point three. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. Ninety nine point three Nigeria.